A while back I did this video about using the manual machine. In fact, that might be the only thing that you know about the channel. Well today, after a few requests, I've decided to make another one and show you how it's done. Before we get started, hit like, hit subscribe, click the little bell so you stay up to date as the new videos come out. Now let's get into it. With this manual machine, I made a few changes over my original design, which was really nothing more than me just piecing it together with no plan, using whatever scraps I had left over from another project. Originally, I had planned on using Velcro straps to keep the wheel in place, but it really didn't work out. The Velcro would just rip out. So I started using a nylon buckle strap, like the kind you buy to repair a backpack or something. But I didn't really like the strap rubbing the rim all the time. I don't know if it would hurt anything cosmetically, but I didn't want to risk it. I also changed the orientation of the side braces. I like this design much better. Just like the ramps I built last week, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can download the plans. As far as the material, you'll need two 10-foot 2x6s. Then you'll need some 3-inch screws, an eye hook and a strap of some sort if you want to strap in the front wheel so you don't tip all the way back. First we're going to cut the base to 8 feet in length. Then we're going to save the 2 foot scrap for another piece. Then we'll cut an 18 inch backer. Then we'll cut a piece that's 21 inches and 3 sixteenths from long point to long point with a 45 degree bevel on each side. And that'll be for the back brace. This piece is really the only important structural piece. You're going to be putting a lot of force on this piece every time you rock backwards. So this little brace is actually what's keeping everything together. Now I'm going to mount the backer 18 inches from the back edge of the base plate. Take a speed square and draw a line across the plate, and when we mount the back we will make sure that it's on this line so we know it's square. Screw that in from the bottom. Then from that connection, measure back and up 15 inches. Make a mark and draw a line with your square on both sides. Now in your head, add 15 squared plus 15 squared, which is 450. Then remembering back to your square root tables from third grade, you'll see that the square root of 450 is 21.2132, which is basically 21 inches and 3 sixteenths, which is also the exact length of the board that we cut for the backer. I'm just fucking around, I'm not that smart. I figured all this out ahead of time with a calculator. I got it wrong and I asked my wife for help and so now here we are. Okay, so we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the diagonal so that when we line up the lines with the piece and put it all together, it'll be square. You don't have to be this detailed with it. We're not machining airplane parts. You can just use your speed square and eyeball it. But I like to get overly picky with this kind of shit. In fact, even though I did do all this bullshit math, I'm still gonna check it with my speed square. Yup. So next I'm going to install a couple side braces. I'm going to cut these with a 45 degree angle on each end and measuring 24 inches from long point to long point. So why aren't you going to use the Pythagorean theorem for this one point, Dexter? Well, we should already have the back piece square to the base plate. So if I cut these square, they should just fit right in. So before we put them in, we should have a quick talk about wheel width. When I put these side braces flush with the outside edge of the 2x6, I had plenty of room to squeeze the rear wheel in with no problem. But if you're running fat tires or mid-fat tires, you might have to deflate your tires a little bit to get them to squeeze in. But honestly, I don't know how well that will work. So let's take a quick measurement to get a custom fit. I know, I know, it's kind of hard to measure a tire. It's got it written on the side, but that's not always exactly what it is, depending on how it's inflated. Well, I mean, you could just eyeball it. That's fine. But a good way to get an accurate measurement is to take your two side pieces, put it up against the tire, make sure that it's at least resting on two parts of the tire so it's not rocking back and forth, and then measure the space between. Two inches, five sixteenths. That's good enough for me. 
Now, if we really wanted to get fancy, we could screw them in at the proper tire width up front and then taper them in a little bit so as you put the tire in, it squeezes down on it. Ooh, I like that idea. Let's do that. Now, I'll cut a couple pieces at 60 degrees. And I'll put them together and with the bike in the machine, I'll chalk them under the wheel, mark where they go, take the bike out and screw them in. Now with the few scraps we have left, I can make some outriggers. Now I've said it before, I don't really like the idea of outriggers. I mean, I like the idea of stability, but I don't really like the idea of maybe leaning on the bike sideways too much and damaging your rims, especially since wheels can be stupidly expensive. And I like to argue that we need to practice our balance as well. Actually, I have a compromise. We'll add them up front to the manual machine instead of the back. That way, when we're standing on the bike, we have full benefit of the outriggers, but when we go back into the manual, its stability is reduced. That way there's less pressure on the rims if we go off to the side. And it doesn't need to be big either. Just a few inches on either side will be all it takes. Last of all, we'll add an eye hook. That way if you want to add a strap to keep yourself from falling backwards, there's something to mount it to. Find a spot ahead of your front tire, mark it, and pre-drill it. Screw it in, and you're good to go. I can already tell that it feels so much more stable on the front. And this holds the wheel in place perfectly. This is a far superior manual machine. I really like the design changes that I've made. But now I've got two of them. I don't know what I'm going to do with either one of them. Do you want the old one? If you want the old one, drop me a line. Maybe I can get it to you. Mm -hmm.